Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a service of worship led by local pastors and members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. MSL Northland is locally produced with a message for the world. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh, hi. Welcome to My Savior Lives, Northland. We are filming here at Shepherd of the Lake in a couple of harbors, or, you know, the name of the town is Two Harbors, and some people don't like me saying couple, but that's what I like. You can see us on MSL Northland on Vimeo, YouTube, Facebook, or our webpage. Or Sunday morning, 9.30, KBGR, Channel 6. Hey, I'm going to play some music, and I'll be right back. Make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, now that you have assured us of the completion of our redemption through the re resurrection of our Lord Jesus, give us the will to show forth in our lives what we profess with our lips. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
first lesson for the third Sunday of Easter is Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 22. But Saul was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord and went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, and he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. Falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias! And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise, go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. He has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go for he is a chosen instrument of mine, to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He arose and was baptized. Taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed. Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem, and those who called upon his name? And he has not, he has not come here? Has he not come here? For that's this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength, confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this Sunday is written in Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. And when he had taken the scroll... The four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the Lamb, to open its seals. You were slain, and by your blood you ransomed the people of God from every tribe, language, and people, and nation. You have made them a kingdom of pri and priests to our God. And they sang and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing, honor, and glory, and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is from St. John, the 21st chapter. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. 
He revealed himself in this way, Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. And Simon, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and got into a boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Just as the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the other side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. And that disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it's the Lord. And Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, and he put on his outer garment, and he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, and they were not far from land, but about a hundred yards off when they got out on land. They saw a charcoal fire in place, and fish laid out on it, and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to his disciples, and he was since he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
Pray with me. Father, open our hearts, our minds, that we might hear Jesus, that we might walk in his ways, that we might hear him each and every day. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, this is one of my favorite moments of the resurrection stories. I know, you got the upper room. Peace be with you. You got the people on the road to Damascus, the two disciples, and Jesus reveals himself, and they run back, and the disciples say, well, we already know. This is one of my favorite accounts, mainly because of what Jesus did and what the disciples did. I mean, picture this. Jesus has been risen from the dead for a few days, maybe a week, more than a week. They're back in Galilee. And what do they do? Well, Peter says, I'm going fishing. And a bunch of them said, okay. Now this is different than us going fishing, right? Because they don't fish by doing this. They fish by doing this, throwing nets. And they threw the net out and pulled it in and they threw the net out and they pulled it in and they threw the net out. Imagine, all night long. The sun has just come up. They are weary. They caught nothing. They probably looked at Peter and said, what are we doing out here? And then there appears a guy on the shore. Now, catch this. He is 100 yards off. A whole football field from end zone to end zone. And he looks at him and he says, hey, you catching anything? It had to be a holler. It's clear across 100 yards. And they said, no. And then Jesus, and I believe full of humor, says, throw your net on the right side of the boat. They've worked all night. Now, I think an amazing thing about this story, because I work in the church, is that they didn't have a committee meeting and decide whether to do that or not. They just threw the net. And it fell, got to be breaking. And all of a sudden, John, the one whom Jesus loves, said, hey, it's the Lord. And then Peter does something you wouldn't have expected. He puts on his cloak and jumps in the water. Wow, what a story. What's the point of it, though? What's it? Oh, yeah, and then when they get to the shore, Jesus is cooking breakfast for them, taking care of their very needs. What Jesus is doing is showing them how to live with him or live without him. There's a movie called Night and Day or Nightly and Day, starring Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. And Tom Cruise is a secret agent. And Cameron Diaz is some lady. And and Tom Cruise interacts with her, and all of a sudden her life is thrown into the midst, and crazy stuff is happening, things are exploding. She can't handle it. And Tom looks at her and he says, listen, with me, without me. With me, without me. And she goes along with him, and life goes on like that, and the entire movie goes kind of crazy, until finally, it's all over with, but then Tom Cruise's character is in trouble. And she kidnaps him from a hospital while he's unconscious, takes him and saves him. And when he finally wakes up, she says to him, With me, without me. With me, without me. I want you to think of that in terms of Jesus. With him? Hang on. With him? Without him. The disciples went fishing, and without Jesus, they caught nada. Now, if I go fishing and I don't catch anything, 
it doesn't bother me at all because I'm fishing. Right? Those fishermen out there know what I'm talking about. There's nothing better than sitting in the boat throwing a line, even if you aren't catching anything. But these guys were working all night long, throwing a net, pulling it in, and got nothing. And as soon as Jesus shows up, they catch so many fish that the net should have broke. 153, it says. Some commentators have mentioned that that's how many different kinds of fish there were in the Sea of Galilee. I don't know if that's true or not, but there was a lot, and they were all large. It wasn't like 153 minnows. What does it mean? What does it mean for you and me? If the disciples who had just witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they put their hands, fingers in the hole in his side. They heard him say to them, peace be with you, and breathed on them and gave them the spirit. If these disciples could just go back to whatever they were doing and forget about it, Does that sometimes happen to us? Here it is the third Sunday at Easter. You gathered with a whole bunch of people, or maybe you didn't, but you said those words, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. But now it's some Sundays later. What are you doing? Jesus was teaching them that everything we do Wait a minute, Pastor, you mean, I mean everything we do needs Jesus. Every moment, every day, every task. I know that personally. Because many times I've said, I know what to do, and went ahead and did it, and it didn't work out right, and later on I said, did I invite the Lord into this? You see, it says, if the Lord doesn't build the house, the workers labor in vain. If he isn't there in the midst of it, if it isn't his voice saying, throw the net on the right side of the boat, then we've missed it. Yeah, he's risen from the dead. We have eternal life. We have forgiveness of sins. But sometimes we think of Jesus only as an insurance card to eternity, not the one who walks with us every single day. It says in Romans 6, just as he has risen from the dead, so shall we rise. But it also says, just as he has risen from the dead, we can live a new life. How do we live that new life? We live it knowing we are forgiven. Knowing that he paid the entire price for our sins. We can now walk in the light because we're forgiven. We can now walk in mercy because he has had mercy on us. Children of God, I want to tell you about the two twelves. Hear me. Two twelves. The first one is Romans 12. I want you to open your Bibles and look at it. It begins with these words. In view of God's mercy. And then St. Paul says, because of his mercy, this is how we live. And there's a whole list in Romans 12. Now that I am forgiven, now that I know I have peace with God, now that Christ is in the heavens and ascended and sitting at the right hand of my, I can now live this new life. Romans 12. Oh yeah, the word I want to use is love. I can now love because he loved me. I can now love him because he loved me. I can now love my neighbor because he loved me. Two twelves. Did I say two twelves? Yes. The other one is Hebrews chapter 12, which begins with these words. Therefore, since we are surrounded by this great crowd of witnesses, let us run the race marked off before us. Let us throw aside everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, 
the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning and shame. He's not talking about a sprint there. He's talking about a marathon. A marathon that we run with our eyes fixed on the one who died for us. The one, our eyes fixed on the one who suffered for us. With our eyes fixed on the one who rose for us. You are empowered to win in amazing ways. You are empowered to live this new life. You are forgiven and a child of God. You are adopted into his kingdom. It isn't just about a promise to eternity. It's a promise about how we live this life in Christ. May God grant you that power. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, who through his blood made an everlasting last will and testament, equip you that you might do everything he wants you to do, working in us to that which pleases him, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray Luther's morning prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer he taught us. Whose Father? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you his peace. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart You're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you, oh, I need you Every hour I need My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information about a church in your area, or if this program has been a blessing to you, please send comments and contributions to MSL Northland, CO Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 2012 East Superior Street, Duluth, Minnesota, 55812. We appreciate your support and prayers for this ministry. My Savior Lives Northland is a production of Stokes Media House in conjunction with the Wisconsin and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and supported by viewers like you.